Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like my videos and um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell on the side so you can get notified when I upload new content. Hey guys, welcome to ESN Cast again. Uh, today I'm going to be doing several uh, parts installations on in this scooter. The video is going to be installation one, it's going to be installation two, installation three. It's going to be three parts, but I'm going to give a name so you guys can actually find it when, whenever you need to install that, that specific part that you're going to be installing. Thanks to monitoring, we've got new parts for you guys available for the 9 bot Max scooter. So. Uh, what is important, uh, things that I want to talk about is that uh, the monitoring parts are very easy to install, don't add up too much weight to the scooter. Yeah. Monitoring parts are very good and I'm pretty sure you guys will be happy with it too. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing in this part of the video is I'm going to remove the motor from the monitoring suspension, install the disc brake, uh, which comes with 120 millimeters, which I added 140 millimeters. I ad adjusted uh, the bracket. Um, and tools that I'm going to be using still is the socket that it comes for removing the nut from the wheel and Allen keys, torque number 15, additional nuts that are for the caliper adapter and then we ha I have a clipper and that's going to be because I'm going to need to cut a zip tight, another Allen key. To begin the process of everything I'm going to start by removing the, the body cover as you can see, I have a clear one already, but um, if you have the regular, it's the very same thing. What you're going to be doing is removing all the screws around. I'm going to use a torque number 15. As you can see, I have all my screws in my lid, so I didn't need to remove them. And you're going to be doing the same with your own, with the other regular lid. You don't have to remove the screws fully, just leave them over there. So it's easy for you to just do the installation back again in the same place without having to touch the screws. All right, so the next step over here is going to be for me to unplug the battery, the controller, this controller. See, we are going to unplug the power core. That's the battery connector. And as we remember, I unplugged the power core already. So the next step over here is going to be to try to power up the scooter a couple of times. To make sure that the, the controller is completely drained, that it doesn't have any power on it. So now I'm safe to unplug the two other connections. In the next step is going to be for you to identify your facet wires first, which is a connector like this, or you're going to have the three pin and the three pin connector uh, in the scooter. What you're going to need to do is unplug this part. The next thing that you're going to unplug is going to be the, the second wire, which is the, the whole sensor that it comes from the motor wires from the back, which is here. You can see all of it together. So if I move this one, it moves down. So I know that this is for me, this is the, gonna be the whole sensor coming from the motor. And as I was saying, this is the whole sensor that it comes on my wire that I was touching. So I know that this one, I just need to go and find the connector. And as we can see, is this one in the bottom. My fingers are too thick, so I can't really reach and to pull the wires is not so easy. And I don't wanna damage the connector. So I'm going to use a little plier as I was saying, uh, make sure that your battery is completely drained, that it doesn't have any power. So we make sure that these things don't, even though if they touch something in there, uh, nothing happens. As you can see, it's already off. The idea is when you uh, put the plier in it, as we can see, it's just to press that little clipper, that little clipper in there, in this side press it and pull it a little bit and then remove the rest with your hand. So it's very simple. You don't have to, you don't pull the, this kind of um, connectors fully with this. You don't put that much pressure. You just release the, the clipper that is in the top of it. As you can see, I removed the motor cables from the controller. They are released. So I'm going to begin to remove it. And the way, easy way to do it is by me to start by removing the, the, the whole sensor connector first. Completely out of the way. 
once it's out. As you can see, I have other wires over here, so my my is um, removal is a little more difficult. And that's it. As you can see, I have extra wires, so it make it a little more difficult, but it's done. All right, so once that is out, we're gonna proceed to and assemble the suspension. Remove the protectors. This screw needs to be removed completely. Put it inside. Using two Allen keys, one in each side. Came out another side, so it's okay. So I removed the other screw. So when I not lose position on this, I'm going to put this uh, actually on the other side. So we put this one in. We loosen up over here. As you can see, I'm leaving my part of suspension right there in that side, so I'm not moving it. Now I'm ready to remove the rest of the parts of the suspension. As you can see, we go to the other side. Remove the protector, just that one. As I have this one as a custom, so I have to remove this screw as well. That's for the fender support. As you can see, I have the fender completely off the way. Using the same method. Not this out. Now, motor is completely free to go, so I'm going to pull it out like this. See? It's out. As we know, there is a nut over here that we can install, so we're gonna put it out. To proceed with the installation of this brake of motoring, I did cut off the, the bullet connectors from this motor, which you don't need to do. That's why I'm explaining this because I don't want you to have a uh, misunderstanding that I, uh, you need to do that. You don't need to because uh, actually that this uh, this brake pedal for motoring, uh, if you have MR60 connectors already in your motor, you don't need to remove them because this uh, will fit through the hole of it and you don't need to do that. But in this case, in this motor, I did, I did remove the, the bullet connectors because of um, I'm going to be upgrading it. That's the only reason, okay guys? So, but yes, I'm gonna be using a different motor. It's not gonna be the same. I'll take you through the process how, so you guys can see how simple it is to install these parts. To remove the screws over here, we're gonna use a uh, torque head number 15. With this, you're just gonna need to loosen a, a little bit. So you do this fast, you're going to have to just uh, loosen them up a little bit. They're never too tight, so it's not difficult to remove. Then you can use your screw gun. Once we have removed all the original screws from the front motor, um, we are going to get our disc, uh, our part monitoring and we're going to pass it through 
I would suggest if you if you think that your motor has a uh, bad bearings, I would change them before putting this part. Yes, make sure that it's in position. As you can see, the bulb is completely free. You want to put it right there. Now we are going to get the screws that comes with it, with the installation kit. And as you can see, the screws come right with it, so you don't have to add any more thread lacquer for the first installation unless you have to remove them. For this we're going to use an allen key. We always start in one end and then we go across to put the right pressure to it. Not a lot of pressure, but somewhat. Once you feel that the, the key is not moving too much, so it's mean that it's fully tied. You don't want to push it because uh, you will damage the thread. You want to make sure that the, all the disc is sealed completely around. We're going to have to add uh, the spacer. Now that we remove the disc, we are going to install the base, which is the spacer, as you can see. That's what we're going to be doing. So important, so you can see that the, the rotation of the tire, it, the tire will tell you what rotation it is, is need to go, to. so I mean rotates this way. So we're gonna make sure that we don't flip the disc in another position, as you can see, it has an arrow. Uh, this is 120 uh, millimeters of this break, so and as we can see here, it has that, and that's the rotation that it has to be. So you wanna keep it that way too. So we put it back in. Wanna make sure that it matches the, the holes. Now, these screws, we're gonna need to treat them. Blue thread lacquer. That's what we use here. The base has to be centered, so we wanna make sure that it stays in position. Now, when we have all the screws, as we can see, they're all loose. So once we have them right like that, you want to give it a little push like that to the rotor, like this. By the way, this doesn't need too much pressure, so we do that. Once we have it like that, a little push, very little, minimal. Make sure to put your Allen key all the way so that it feels like touching all, all the way to the bottom so it doesn't damage uh, the head of the screw. All right, that's about it. That's the installation for the for the rotor. These screws, we're not gonna use them anymore, but we can save them for future reference. Okay guys, so as you could see, the installation of this uh, this part is very simple. As you could see in the process, how it, how fast and easy it was done. This is just a matter of installing it in the scooter and that's about it.
In this step, I'm going to install the motor back with the monitoring part. As you can see, I have a 140 millimeters rotor and I have my zip type already installed in the spacer also in there with 140 millimeters rotor. So I'm using the, the spacer that is shaped to protect the motor wire. So I'm gonna install it now. And all I need to do is make sure that the wires are to the front to the size of the scooter. So you can see they need to be to the front. And then I slide that motor in, having in mind that the rotor is close to the, to the base of the scooter. So we just push it in. And this side, we are going to use the, the watcher, which is a torque support. We are going to use the same parts that it came from monitoring uh, uh, suspension using the same tool. This one we are going to completely seal it up back. That's about it. Let's put the cover again. Next step, put your fender back. Simple as that. Now we're going to put back the motor wires. So we are going to begin with the fossil wires. That is done. I did adjust this wire, so that's why they are like that, but your motor shouldn't be this way. Okay. Now, as you could see, I left the arm of the suspension hanging on here. So this and this part, I'm going to remove it fully to get this pin out. So what I'm going to do is put it through the other side. and I have it in place over here in the chalk, already install it, and I have the fender with a pin already in there, as we can see, you can see it right there, so that's ready to go. So now I'm going to align the suspension here. And that is done, that is installed right there. Now I'm going to align it in the chuck. And that is done. I'm going to secure the top.
now the rear screw which is the fender put my screw here that is done now and this time we're not going to use uh, the, um, the spacer because um, uh, we are using it in the inner part so we're going to proceed Right. So right there, secure it. Put the copper back in. Now, as we can see, I just want to show that, uh, that this thing has enough clearance for the, for the rotor to pass by with the screws and don't touch anything. This is good. There's not going to be any problem. You know, it's just going to be that way. It's going to be moving, boom, 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 up and down, up and down. This is not going to have any issues ever. All right, so as we have all the wires connected in place, everything is ready. We are going to proceed to connect the um, the motor but I want these wires to be free here so I'm going to connect the motor this way and push this connector all the way down so it's off the way completely because this wires gets really hot so I don't want any other wires to be touching them should be okay so the next step is con to connect the, the whole sensor As I was saying in the, in the entrance about the uh, zip tie, that's for my installations for my wiring because I have a lot of wires over here for different things. So, did you won't be needing this installation, this kind of things for your installation because it's not needed. Also, your wires for the motors are going to be a little longer, as you can see, I have it on top over here, and that's because I mean, uh, um, this is a motor that I rebuilt. And uh, I needed to do some wiring adjustments. So these wires, I need to be tied up like this for my fixing over here. All right. Anyways, my, yours in your installation, you wanna make sure that all your wires are uh, consolidated, not on top over here, okay, because I'm, um, and what happens is that if you leave your wires on top over here, they get cut off with a regular um, uh, battery cover because it has an edge over here from here back. So that will cut your wires. So don't make sure that you don't have that. Uh, in my installation, my, in this installation I'm doing, it doesn't matter because I have my, my I have a different type of uh, cover which that it give clearance over here uh, for the for those wires to be free. As we can see, uh, those are completely off. There is uh, enough clearance for them but you do not want to have that all right so we did that installation that part over there so the the next thing is to plug the battery back tackle the wires in as you can 
Now that I finished installing my motor, I put all my wires together. Uh, my next step before closing the um, sealing the battery compartment is going to be for me to test the motor and see if it works. I turn on the scooter and I press the throttle. And I see my motor is working, so that means everything is fine. I turn off my scooter and I'm going to proceed to seal the battery compartment. Now that everything is done, in this step, what I'm going to do is uh, make sure that all my wires are in place and uh, seal back the scooter back. Now we are going to finally secure this uh, nuts we did do in the when we're installing the, the wheel. We almost got it right. That is done. So now our next step over here is to install the caliper adapter. For that, I'm going to use the, the longest screw in the bottom. The smallest screw in the top. Make sure that this lip stays secure in there. That's enough. Now we bring the caliper back in for installation. That's about it. That's the installation of the rear brake for the suspension.